Well, that's how you start a video right there. <laughs> what is up, everybody? Man, I may have just got myself in a bind. I don't know if I can get out of... Uh, I don't know if I can get out of where I pulled over at. Let, let's see if we can get the live stream working this time. I tried it a minute ago, and it didn't work. And uh, I figured I'd try it again. There we go. We got some people in here. Good, good, good. It's working. What's up? Any pump? Edward? Peter? Good, good, good. Good. I'm glad it's working. We got, we got Tim over here. I don't think he's feeling very talkative today, but he's over there. What's up, everybody? We are going to Copart to do your Copart walk around for the week. And I'm late. I'm always late. I had a hard time sleeping last night. And I didn't get much sleep. All right, so here's the deal. I just got a call. Oh, man, somebody moved into my old house. I miss that place. All right, so... We are out um, getting ready to go do the Copart walk around. And I didn't have a video for today. So I thought, what a perfect time to do an update video to the Corvette. So as most of you know by now, I bought a brand new 2019 uh, C7 Stingray, base model, nothing fancy, just a seven speed stick shift and like brand new, it had three miles Dang it, I'm doing 55 and there's a cop. Here we go. Uh, just don't bother me, dude, please. Um, anyway, dang, this truck, man, it doesn't feel like you're going that fast. And then you find out you are when you get nailed with a ticket. Anyway, I bought this brand new Corvette. had three miles on the odometer. And... I got to drive it for like 41 miles before the check engine light came on and then the fuel gauge went out and it's been making a burning smell since the day I bought it, right? Just this horrible smell from the back of the car. Well, I decided to take it to the dealership and have them check it out. You know, I figured it wasn't going to be a big deal, right? I mean, how big of a deal could it be? It couldn't, couldn't be that big of a deal. Well, it turns out it's actually a very big deal, according to them. They've had to order a bunch of parts, and I was told... So this is day nine that the car has been sitting in service. Now, for those of you that don't know, uh, the car broke down on me. It left me sitting on the side of the road uh, on Broadway Extension towards uh, Edmond, where the dealership is. I was so close to the dealership, I could see the sign right in front of me, but I was broken down. I couldn't go, I couldn't push it because I was on a highway where it's like five lanes of traffic. I had to wait for three hours. Three hours I sat in front of the dealership on the highway waiting for a tow truck to get me to the dealership. And then the tow truck driver the tow truck driver drops off my new Corvette, my brand new 2019 Corvette that now has 150 miles on it, right? He drops it off next to the C6 Corvette I traded in. And he didn't know that was my old Corvette. He's just the tow truck driver. He didn't know. You know, but I, I was just I, mind blown, man. Mind blown. It was like a literal slap in the face. He dropped... Sorry for the video being so shaky, guys. He, he he pulled the broken down, brand new Corvette right next to the Corvette that never broke down on me. Right next to it. And when he pulled in, I looked and I just shook my head. And I said, unbelievable. I said, that right there, I said, that's the Corvette I traded in on this one. I said, it's 10 years older. It's got 75,000 miles on it. And it never broke down. It had a check engine light one time that cost me $180. That's it. I've got a brand new Corvette that you can't even start. It doesn't run. It doesn't do anything. It'll sit there and the engine will crank over. Won't run. Won't do crap. <clears throat> so, in Oklahoma, here's how the lemon law works. So I know a lot of you want me to go go and try to you know file lemon law on this thing. And at this point, I'm that's I'm gonna. <laughs> I'm not a very smart man, Jenny. <laughs> Let me tell you something. 
last night, I okay, I got a let me backpedal here. I got a I got a phone call um, from the dealer uh, several days ago. It's been several days ago, probably five days ago or so. Sorry guys, I got to merge. Woo, cold baby. <laughs> yeah, I'm coming home. <laughs> Man, this thing rolls cold like a mother. I am telling you. <laughs> I love this truck. I do. I love this old girl, man. Um, listen, this truck right here I bought from Copart for what? Three grand? $2,500? Something like that? 350,000 miles on it. It's 20 years old. And it didn't break down. Well, okay. It broke down once because it ran out of gas. That was my fault, sort of. I didn't know that when this truck gets to a quarter of a tank, it's actually empty. It really didn't break down. It ran out of diesel, not gas. It ran out of diesel, ran out of fuel. Uh, I got a Chevy Cruze with almost 200,000 miles on. It still runs. It has never broken down either. But I got this brand new $60,000 Corvette. And it's sitting at a dealership in a parking lot. And it doesn't do nothing. So... Here's here's what I was told. Like five days ago, I got a call from the dealership and they said, uh, hey, we got some good news. We got the parts ordered. The parts will be here Saturday. That's this previous Saturday. Keep in mind, this is a live video. For any of you watching after the live stream is over, this video was recorded live. So this is actually today. This is Monday. So I was told the parts would be in by Saturday and this thing was going to get torn down and they were going to jump on it. I just got a call before I left to do this Copart walk around from the dealership and they said, we just wanted to call an update. Now I want to be very clear about this. Bob Moore Chevrolet is not, they're not responsible for any of this. All right. That car, if it is a lemon and we don't know for sure that it is, if it is a lemon, that car could have landed on the showroom floor of any dealership in the United States. Any one of them, not Bob Moore's fault. There's nothing they could have done about it. Next. As far as parts go, Bob Moore is doing everything they can to expedite the uh, the shipping of these parts. But because of the, uh, what is it, the uh, automotive AW, you know what I'm talking about, the union? The the, strike. Yeah, the strike, the AWU or, or AWL or, 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 or whatever it is, that strike, parts are back ordered because nobody can get parts for their cars. Um, so he called me today and that's what he told me uaw thank you thank you he called me and he said look man he said we're doing everything that we can uh okay he said we're, we're doing everything that we can to get these parts the problem is they're back ordered and we don't have an eta like there is no estimated time of arrival for the parts which means there's no estimated time for completion of my car which brings me to the lemon law <laughs> Now, before I tell you about the Lemon Law in my state, Lemon Law varies state to state, but in my state, uh, the Lemon Law is the vehicle has to be out of my possession for 30 business days, and then it's considered a lemon. If it's in the service department for over 30 business days, that car is considered a lemon. Or, if the car has the same problem four times, four times, and they weren't able to fix it, on time number four, that's it. Lemon. Now, the interesting thing is, I got the manufacturer's certificate of origin. And if, if you guys don't know what that is, it's not a title. When you buy a brand new car, you don't get a title. You get an MSO. Uh, titles are actually just for the state. Uh, whatever state you live in, that has to do with the state. The, the MSO is actually the birth certificate of your car. It's got all the pertinent information on it, VIN number and all that stuff. <clears throat> but it is not a title. Now, you have to surrender. Basically, the MSO is your ownership. A title is not proof of ownership. I'm sorry to tell you. That's what the states want you to think. It's not what it is. The true proof of ownership is in the MSO. You have to surrender your MSO, your, your car's birth certificate, to the state in order to get your tags and your title. Well, I just got a hold of the tag agency because I now have all my paperwork and I'm required by law to tag the car. Well, do you guys want to guess how much it costs to tag 
that car, anybody, throw a number out there. I'll, I'll give you a minute. Go ahead and throw a number out there. I'd like to see if anybody can guess close to what it costs to tag that car. Jeff, thank you for the super chat, brother. I appreciate that. I do. I appreciate that because we're going to need it. Okay, we got $600, $100, $2,700. You're close. <laughs> okay, okay. Yeah, no, $6,500. Oh, hell no. Wow. Fourteen, bam. Bam, you're getting there. You guys are close. $2,500, Alberto. Okay, so we're... Okay, all right, all right, all right. We got it, we got it. You guys, you guys are pretty close. What it is going to cost me in excise tax and sales tax alone on that car is $2,200. $2,200 in sales tax and excise tax. Now that is not all that I have to pay. I have to pay for the tag. The tag is $120 on top of that. There's title transfer fees, miscellaneous filing fees, notary fees. There, there's all kinds of little fees they throw in. So we're talking probably somewhere around $2,300 to $2,400 out the door. There's one problem with that. I can't tag the car. In order for me to get tags and do the title on the car, I have to have the car. The car has to be with me, present for a vehicle identification number inspection. The state of Oklahoma requires, if you, if you buy a car from out of state, or if you have a brand new car, the state has to inspect it. Now, that's not a big deal. Any tag agency will do it. You can go to any number of a million tag agencies in the state, and all they're gonna do is they're gonna look at your MSO, and they're gonna match the VIN number. As long as it matches, you're good. Well, I can't, I can't do that because I don't have the car. The car doesn't run. The car doesn't drive. It's sitting 25 miles away for, from me in the shop. So at this point, if it's not given back to me within 30 days of the time I bought it, I'm going to get hit with $3 a day, $3 a day in penalties that's on me to pay. $3 a day in penalties. Well, I bought that car on the 13th of October. Sorry, the 13th of November. So the the days are running out. I've got till the 13th of December to tag that car before I start getting in trouble for something that I have no control over. Um, so that's pretty much the, the long and short of it. I, I don't I don't know. I don't know when the car is going to be given back. They said they're going to call me and update me daily. But and here's here's the thing. I bought some things for the car last night because I was told last week that the uh, parts would be in Saturday, which was what 2 days ago. Because the parts were going to be in 2 days ago, I figured, you know, I may be looking at another week to get it torn down and put back together. So I bought new exhaust. I couldn't get a sponsor. Go figure. I couldn't get a sponsor. I tried to get a damn sponsor for the exhaust. I couldn't get one. So I had to go and, and pay out of pocket. So I bought a new exhaust. I bought a... What's up, TK? I bought a cat... but Not a cat back. I'm sorry. I bought an axle back exhaust only because truthfully, I like the car how it is. It just needs to be louder. It's a Corvette. You know, it's not supposed to sound weak. And it sounds weak. The stock exhaust on that thing literally sounds weak as hell. So I bought an I bought a uh, uh, not an axle back. Dang it! I bought a uh, yeah axle back. I bought an axle axle back exhaust for it. It's just over a thousand dollars. You know, like twelve hundred bucks for an MBRP. I love that company. I've used them on a couple of my cars, and right now I've got the MBRP on my Camaro SS. Sounds great. So I expect the exhaust is going to sound even better on my uh, Corvette. Now that's not all, I also spent $1,100 on tires. If you guys remember in the last video, I said that those uh, Michelin Pilot Super Sports were just, they're horrible tires in the winter or in the fall or in the spring. They're only good in the summer. You know what I mean? When, when the roads are warm, it's sticky. They're dangerous when the roads are wet, even just for a rain, you shouldn't drive. Well, I'm sorry, I didn't spend that kind of money on a car to not drive it. I'm gonna drive it year round, Rain, sleet, snow, I don't give a damn. I'm driving it, okay? It's not gonna be a garage queen. We're gonna get it ceramic coated. So I spent another $1,100 on tires on top of like another $1,100, $1,200 on the exhaust last night. And then I get told today, they don't know when the parts are gonna be here. They don't know when they can get the parts because they're back ordered from the strike. And I, I told the guy, like I really do, I, I don't wanna make it sound like I'm bashing 
on Bob Howard. I'm really not. Bob Howard didn't do this. Bob Howard has no control over the strike. <clears throat> they had no control over that car being defective from day one. They're not responsible for it. And they've been working really hard to try to make this right. But I, I hope they, and hopefully you guys for sure, can understand my frustration. I have got a brand new Corvette that I've owned since the 13th. And it's the 25th. 12 days. I've owned that car almost two weeks. And I got to drive it for three days. It broke down, left me on the side of the road stranded for three hours, and I had the car for three days. It's got 140 miles on the odometer right now, literally 140 miles. Then I'm told the parts are going to be here on Saturday, so I go and spend a bunch of money, over two grand on, on new tires and new exhaust, and then I get a call today and I'm told, we don't know when we're going to get parts. So this car may end up being a lemon. And I, I'm going to tell you, I, that's not, the, the, that's not the, the way I wanted to do it. But that's where I'm at now. Mentally, I'm frustrated. I'm aggravated. I'm really upset that I got this car. My first new Corvette. It's not something you forget. You know, I know for some of you, it's not a big deal. For some of you, you got a lot more money than me. And a new Corvette's no big deal. For me, a new Corvette's like, that's my dream from childhood. That th This is my dream being fulfilled this is my dream coming to fruition this is everything i've ever wanted since being a little kid playing with my little c3 hot wheel corvette this is everything to me it's a it's a big deal you know the purchase is a big deal to me and this is not a good experience it was a great experience dealing with the dealership and they really did a lot to help me and, and they didn't screw me over and add a bunch of unnecessary crap or fees or anything so i'm not mad at the dealership i just want to make sure yeah, it's a base model Corvette. That's it. I don't. I don't need anything more than that. I don't. I don't need a ZR1. I. I. I don't need a Z06. I'm happy with a base model Corvette, guys. I'm a simple guy. I'm a real simple guy. All right. Um, so anyway, that's where we're at. You know, that's where I'm very frustrated with the car. I'm frustrated with the experience. Um, honestly, what I would prefer at this point, I don't trust that car. I'm never going to trust that car. Would you trust a car that left you stranded on the side of the road after 140 miles? Uh, this thing was assembled by mostly machines at a factory. And now a person has to get under there and take the transmission out. The transmission, rear differential, rear axles, the rear bumper, all the exhaust, all of these bolts, nuts, clips, everything is gonna be taken off of this car. And then I have to hope that the person doing it, I don't know, I don't i don't know one way or the other, but I have to hope that the person doing this job is like a seasoned vet that's done like 10 of these and puts every piece back where it goes because God forbid the warranty runs out on it and all of a sudden pieces start falling off of it, nuts and bolts start coming out, electrical gremlins because wires wouldn't weren't put back in their proper clips and clipped to the body, you know, it leaves me skeptical. It leaves me really leery. And and that that's it. That's it. That's where I'm at. I'm just, I'm very frustrated. I really hoped that they would be like, you know, 140 miles, nah, GM is going to eat this, take this car back. We're going to give this man another one. And that's not what happened, you know? So I had, I'm paying for a Corvette. I've got to pay for tags and everything on a Corvette, which I can't do, which I'm going to be penalized for because I don't have it but I don't have a Corvette. I gotta make the payments on the Corvette, but I don't have it. I gotta pay the insurance on it, but I don't have it. Oh, TK already having problems with the S4, huh? Anyway, uh, they're gonna buy YouTube to heck all, yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, I'm gonna have to go because I am at Copart now and I gotta get this walk around done. Oh man, really, the transmission. <laughs> I, I think my car was just the fuel pump and the fuel sender and a crossover pipe. I don't know. I don't know. I know that the dealer is doing the best that they can to get the car right. They want to make sure they replace everything that needs replaced so I don't have problems with it in the future. But now I just don't trust the car. It's brand new and I don't trust it. I, I trust this old pickup truck more than I trust that car at this point. So, 
it is what it is, man. It's out of my hands. There's nothing I can do. Lemon law, there's no lemon law that I can use right now. Like I said earlier, the lemon law is four repairs of the same part. The same part having issues four times in a row, it's a lemon. Or if the car is out of my position, out of my possession due to it being broken down for 30 business days, which is 38 days, at that point, the car is a lemon. We're not there yet. We're we're approaching day number 10, which when you think about it, 10 out of 38, we're getting there. Like we're we'll tomorrow we'll be over a quarter of the way there. Um yeah, I hate to say it, but it looks like GM quality has really gone downhill. I've had issues with the Camaro 2SS automatic transmission, the A8. I've had lots of tranny problems with that. We still don't have the tranny sorted out. The Corvette, like I'm, th this hurts for me because you all know how I've told you from the beginning, I love my GMs. GMs are wonderful. GMs are great. GM is everything. And, you know, I go and buy two very, one brand new Corvette and one almost new Camaro. And both of them got, got major problems, major problems. I've had Mustangs. I have, I've had three Coyote Mustangs. And I had a few minor issues, nothing that put them out of commission, nothing that broke down. Anyway, don't hang with Hoovy. Actually, I would love to hang with Hoovy because I think Hoovy and I have the same problem. It's a mental condition uh, where we like to buy cars that punish us. And sometimes we try to buy a good car and they still punish us. It's just, it's a weird condition that we have. I'd actually like to meet him one day and watch JR go and Weston. Love to meet Weston as well. I'm going to get out of here, folks. We got a lot to get done. Uh, stay safe out there, everybody. Comment your thoughts below. Thank you for joining the live stream. We got a thousand people in the room right now. That's pretty awesome. Thank you for the super chat. I believe it was Jeff that sent the $5 super chat. I appreciate that, man. Uh, cross your fingers. Comment what you think below. Unfortunately, there's nothing I can do. I know a lot of people are like, give it back. Send it back. Give it back to you. You can't do that. That's not how the law works where I live in Oklahoma. I can't give it back. I can't force them to take the car back. There are laws in place, and I just, all I can do is wait. So, yeah, disappointed in Chevy, man. For the first time, I think I'm ever going to say that, I'm really disappointed in General Motors, and that's sad. Hey, somebody sent me a super chat. Jeremy, thank you, man. I appreciate that. Now I'm going to get out here and go record your Copart walk around. So uh, stay tuned for tomorrow. We'll have a Copart walk around for you guys. Stay safe out there, buddy. I will catch you all very soon. Hey. Hey, real quick, hit that subscribe button, wherever it's at, like click that subscribe button and jump on over to Instagram and follow me, Auto Auction Rebuilds, on Instagram. Lunar Outlaw, thank you, man. We will see, remember, Facebook for the inside scoop. Yeah, yeah, Facebook as well, Auto Auction Rebuilds. Thank you, Lunar Outlaw. You guys got to go check Lunar Outlaw's garage, man. He's working on a Buick GS. God, I keep getting sidetracked. <laughs> He's working on a Buick GS. I think you guys will find that one really interesting. I've been following his build on that. Can't wait to see the outcome. All right, we're out of here. Stay safe out there, buddy. We'll catch you all very soon in the next one.